So we know that Indo-European existed, and we know this because if you look at the earliest writings in Indo-European languages, like Hittite, like Sanskrit, like Classical Latin, Classical Greek, if you look at those and compare the vocabularies for those languages, it's obvious that those languages are related, and that those are cognates, vocabulary that they inherited from a common ancestor. And you can look at that vocabulary and see patterns, and you can see how, like, oh, this T changed to a D in these languages, or it went this way in these other languages, and you can kind of wind the clock back once you figure that out and reconstruct what their common ancestor must have looked like. And this is called the comparative method in linguistics. So when you apply this comparative method to all of these oldest attested Indo-European languages and do this reconstruction, you reconstruct a language that we call Proto-Indo-European. So the question is not whether Proto-Indo-European existed, but whether it was as neat and tidy as our reconstructions are. For example, if all of the Proto-Indo-European languages lost a particular sound, like maybe they lost a G sound, we can't reconstruct that. There's no way to kind of wind the clock back on that. So sometimes our constructions are just missing sounds. And that's probably the case. If you look at some of the constructions of Indo-European, sometimes it just looks like a bunch of consonants like smushed together. And it's pretty clear there was probably a vowel there or something in between, but we just can't reconstruct it. We don't have as much information as we need. We also know that all languages exhibit internal variation. There's always dialects, there's internal variation in vocabulary and grammar. So it's not like there was just kind of one way of speaking Proto-Indo-European, just like there's not one way of speaking English. Likewise, Proto-Indo-European probably didn't exist at just like one place and one village. You know, maybe it did originally, but more likely this language is spread out, spread out over a geographic area. There might have been words in one area that weren't in another area. There might have been words that were borrowed from neighboring languages that existed at the time and no longer exist and we don't know anything about. And now it just looks like they were part of Indo-European, but we'll never know any better. We're also not 100% sure where the Proto-Indo-European language was originally spoken. There's the Kurgan hypothesis, which believes that it started around the, Cas the Black Sea and the Caspian steppes. And then there's the Anatolian uh, hypothesis, which believes that the language family started in Anatolia. Some people even think both of those theories are in part true, that the language family started in Anatolia and migrated to the Caspian steppe. So I don't think any linguist is really questioning the existence of Proto-Indo-European, but we all know that our historical reconstructions of the language and the geographic and archaeological setting for the language are going to be somewhat simplified. You can only reconstruct so much complexity when you're reconstructing back 6,000 years.